Hey people, welcome to The Run Testers, and in this video we are gonna be talking cushion shoes, a bit like these guys sat behind me. Now, throughout this video, each of the run testers is gonna give you their three top picks for the best cushion shoes that they've run in this year. These are shoes that they go back to time and time again out of all the many, many, many cushion shoes that we've tested. Now, we do know that cushion shoes can mean lots of different things for different people, and you'll definitely get a flavor of that as you see what each of the run testers has chosen. But as we take you through our picks, we're gonna be explaining why we've picked them as a cushion shoe, how we use them, what kind of runs we use them for, and why we like them. For some people, that's gonna mean shoes that are there to soak up your really easy recovery miles. Other people among us, and out there, I guess you guys as well, will be looking for something that maybe is a little bit more versatile. There's definitely a trend for sort of high cushion shoes that can do a bigger range of jobs within your shoe rotation. But anyway, more on that as we go through our picks. Let's get straight into it. Okay, cushion running shoes. I love a cushion running shoe. This is probably my favorite video I've ever done for the run testers, but you don't wanna hear me talk about how much I love cushion running shoes. You wanna hear about my top picks. You've probably predicted this. I love this shoe. If you've watched any of my videos, I'll have talked about this shoe. It's the Nike Zoom X Invincible Run 2. This is the second version. The first version is very, very, very similar. Nike only really changed the upper. So if you're interested in buying this shoe but you don't want to buy it full price, buy the old version. They'll still be around somewhere. They're very similar, practically the same. Massive big thick wedge of Zoom X foam. It's super plush compared to all of the other running shoes, all of the other running testers gonna talk about. This one is one you sink into. It is so plush, there isn't another shoe like it that's as soft, um, but it's just great. I wear it for all of my easy running because you really kind of sink into this shoe, but bounce back, when Nike launched it, they said it was for kind of those runs you do on tired legs when you're training for a marathon, and they're not wrong. It, it's just a plush shoe. It's amazing to run in. It's exciting to run in. It's bouncy. I Yeah, I wear this at least two or three times a week, all of my easy running. Um, it's just it's just fun. They've added this kind of support rail. Like when you put it on, it looks like you're literally wrapped in kind of a rubber ring of foam. But if you really want a max cushion shoe that doesn't feel like a max cushion shoe, it feels a lot lighter than it is, this is a great one to go for. Um, yeah, super fun, super bouncy, super exciting. I really love running in it. So my second cushion running shoe is a new, it's a new contender. <laughs> it's a new one in the repertoire and it's the New Balance Fuel Cell Super Comp Trainer. Um, this, this has been, designed to be a training shoe and you could wear it on race day if you're not going to be on the podium because it has such a thick it's I've got a 47 millimeter stack height so it is illegal um I'm never going to be on the podium so I wore it for the Royal Parks half a few weeks ago when I wasn't trying to run really quick I was just trying to run and enjoy it and it was bouncy and it's fun to be honest because it's got a carbon fiber plate I don't know if it's like a, it doesn't feel like a ploddy shoe. It is a cushion shoe, but it doesn't feel like a ploddy shoe in the way that the, you know, the Invincible does. It's it's kind of, it has got that carbon fiber plate. It's got that firmness from the plate. The plate is pretty high up in the shoe. Um, so you do feel the plate. You're not kind of sinking into the shoe. But I mean, this is a max cushion shoe. Look how big it is, it is a max shoe. And I think if you really like a plushness of a kind of really cushioned shoe, but you want the snap of a carbon fiber plate, this shoe is designed for you, it's designed for me. It's designed for runners like us that are kind of stumpy, but want cushioning, but also want a shoe they can go quicker in. And you can do this in this. It isn't, I think you're never gonna get a shoe this tall that feels super stable around corners. I mean, I wore it for Royal Parks and it was, that is a twisty race and it was a little bit unstable at points. Um, so I wouldn't wear it on the track, but if you're looking for a cushion shoe that you could also wear on race day, this is a good one. This is a good one to look at. And yeah, it is expensive though. It is definitely more of like a calm vibe, race day shoe, not a ploddy. You know, if you're just gonna do easy miles, you won't need this shoe. Look at some of the others on this video. Last but by no means least, this one's a surprise. I thought I said it in the review of the shoe and I'll say it again. I didn't like past versions of this shoe. It's a super popular shoe. You'll have seen people wearing it, but I always found it just wasn't my shoe. It didn't fit my foot. 
Um, it's the New Balance 1080 V12. New Balance changed this shoe. They got rid of that like plastic kind of the bit that went up the heel that I never got on with. And they've made it more like a kind of classic running shoe, a nice softer upper. It does, it, it, it comes up big. So do be aware of that. I normally have to wear a UK five and a half in New Balance, and this is a UK five. So they come up really long in the foot, but if you can get the sizing right, you will enjoy running in it if you like a cushioned shoe. It's a firmer cushion. It's a New Balance kind of fresh foam. So it's it's definitely soft, definitely cushioned, but not as cushioned as like the Zoom X, it, you know, you're not gonna get much softer than, but that's not a bad thing because you can, it gives it a bit more durability. You can wear this for kind of a tempo session. If, you want. if you're training for your first race and you want a really cushioned shoe, there's no reason why you couldn't do all of your running in this shoe. Um, you know, faster runners would want something lighter and quicker for the track and for speed sessions. But if you're a beginner or you're training for your first marathon and you're like, I don't want to buy three pairs of shoes, this is a great all rounder. It does, it does everything. Um, and I would wear this for kind of easy ploddy runs because I would wear the super comp for something faster. If you only have one shoe, this would be a good one to wear for both kind of, you know, it can cope with that. I really enjoyed running with it. I think it's a massive improvement on the 1080 V11. Um, and yeah, I really, I really rate this shoe. So before I give my three picks, then a bit of context for me. I'm a runner that really, I prefer firmer shoes rather than sort of super cushioned, spongy shoes. I also prefer shoes that are a little bit less sure on the foot rather than some of the really big kind of plush cushion shoes that you get. I like things to be a little bit more agile and a little bit more nimble. So that colors my selection. So not everyone out there is gonna be a runner like me, but if you fit that bracket, where you like a little bit more ground contact, you don't want it too spongy, too squishy, then watch on because these three shoes are probably gonna fit your needs. So considering I just used this shoe to run all the way across Europe, it's probably no surprise that for me, my top kind of cushion shoe that I've gone for is the Socony Endorphin Speed 3. I know some people have already asked me, why would you choose a sort of racier shoe to do that kind of long, slower running. And this is really where I think some people may disagree, but I find the Socony Endorphin Speed 3 fits into that cushion bracket. For the way I run, I personally found that it was perfect in terms of its high stack of cushioning to tackle those kind of seven hour long, really low, slow runs, but I can also go up and race things like a half marathon in it. So that combination of the big stack of power run PB midsole foam, the nylon plate and the wide cushion base at the midfoot, and that forgiving eight mil drop, I think made these the perfect cushion ride they're not sinky like some cushion shoes, but I find them protective enough. I think you get a really nice balance here between softening some of the impact, but still giving you kind of a punch and power in each step. At 229 grams in a UK men's size eight and a half, I also think they're really light on the foot. And where some Matt's cushion shoes, I think can feel heavier and a little bit more chunkier on the foot, these I think are still kind of agile and nimble and, and really light to run in. The other reason I'm gonna recommend these is even after 600 miles in a pair of them, that midsole was still going fine and strong. So I think there's really good durability with the Socony Endorphin Speed 3s too. So for my second pick, I was originally gonna go with the Puma Velocity Nitro 2, which is a shoe I absolutely love. I think it's an absolute bargain of a shoe with great range. I think it's got enough cushion to do those kind of easy runs, but also pick up, but Recently, I've found these guys. It's the Hoka Mac 5, and I've fallen instantly in love with this shoe. This is one of the happiest shoes that I've been running in recently, uh, and it's become a very, very much an instant favorite. Now, again, I think I can hear you sort of say, well, these aren't really the most kind of cushioned shoes out there, and I would totally agree. There are, you know, there are bigger stacks. There are, you know, there's much kind of softer cushioning. These still run firm, but as I said, that's kind of what I like, and I find these plenty cushioned enough. And for me, much like the Socony Endorphin Speed 3, I think these strike a really happy balance between offering enough protection, enough cushioning to soak up the impact from the road that you're running on, but also they've still got enough in them to sort of be rolling you through your stride and giving you a little bit of pop. You know, even on my easy runs, I don't really want to feel like the shoe is necessarily sort of pulling me back and making me have to work harder. I still want to have that kind of fluidity. And I think you get that from the Hoka Mac 5 here. It's, I can go out and run for three hours in this really easily. It's on my foot, I'm clipping along happily, and I just don't know, it's there, it sort of vanishes. It's got that kind of agile, nimble ride, 
And although it is sort of, you know, it's, it's still a fairly big shoe, I don't think it runs too heavy on the foot. I love the way the whole uppers kind of wrap and hold the foot. I like the fact they're not mega soft and you're not sacrificing that kind of ground contact feel. I love the fact that you've also got a nice kind of stable base and the fact that you've got that early stage meta rocker, I think just rolls you through your stride really nicely, even making those easy runs nice and effortless. But also these have a bit more potential to take you up to faster runs too. So my final pick is the On Cloud Monster. Now On has been criticized a lot, I think, for producing shoes that run too firm, that most people who are looking for a little bit more cushion than On has provided. And this shoe is definitely a bit of a response to that. It's, it's the softest On shoe that I've ever run in. And that's down in no small part to the fact that they've whacked on the biggest ever cloud elements. You know, this is on this technology. These clouds are familiar. You'll see them across all the shoes. These are made from the helium foam. Um, and they do make the shoe, you know, those big cloud tech elements do make the shoe ride a little bit softer than most on shoes. Now I did a little test actually. I ran with one cloud monster on one foot and the Asics Nova Blast 3 on another foot for two miles, just to see actually how that softness and how the ride compares. And if you'd asked me before, I would have said actually the Nova Blast 3 was really just sort of different, sort of much softer, spongier, you know, sort of springier ride. But actually during that, I didn't notice a huge amount of difference. There's no doubt the On still are a firmer ride than most of those cushioned shoes. But actually I think what you've got going on here with those big cloud elements, you've got a P-Bax kind of speedboard in the middle, and you've got quite a pronounced kind of rocker geometry, means that I think what you lack in the cushioning you get from kind of roll through your stride. And I think they're actually a really, really nice shoe just to clip along in easy. I found them really sort of comfortable to do so. The uppers are fantastic on on shoes. Again, really good disappearing feel on the foot. I don't think they're over padded, but there's plenty kind of plushness within the heel. At 276 grams, they're the heaviest of the shoes that I've kind of chosen here. But I'm really happy to pop these on and go for those kind of runs where you're getting your head up enjoying the surroundings and just moving very, very slowly for as long as you want to go. I think the On Cloud Monster handles that kind of run really well. I should caveat this choice by saying that um, I wouldn't normally kind of go out and buy cushion shoes. That's not naturally the kind of shoes that I run a lot of my runs in. However, I got sent a pair of the Saucony Triumph 20s uh, not that long ago, and I've been wearing them an awful lot. And I think they are a really great cushion shoe. Um, 253 grams, they're not the heaviest of the lot out there. Um, they're light enough that you kind of really go long in them. You can do 20 miles quite happily. They're lovely and breathable. They've got a nice lockdown. You don't have to worry about the laces. It's just they're the kind of shoe that disappear on your feet. Um, they've got a little bit of a rocker, 10 millimeter drop, so quite punchy from that kind of point of view. Um, massive big chunk of power run midsole, which is responsive enough um, to kind of feel you like you're having fun and you haven't got kind of sponges on your feet. You've got plenty of return, but equally nice and soft enough to just uh, give your feet a bit of love. Um, certainly like the day after a marathon, that was exactly what I wore to go out and do a recovery run in. But if you're feeling a bit tasty, then they will actually cope with a little pickup of pace as well. So I think they're just an, a fantastic all round shoe. Also, the um, the outsole is nice and durable as well. Which brings me to the shoe that actually I probably would wear more in this kind of category normally, which is the Saucony Ride 15. Not your kind of standard cushioned shoe, but probably normally as cushioned as I would have, would have gone. That's 227 grams, so it's a bit lighter. Uh, the outside, the upper mesh is a lot lighter as well. Um, but it's not got quite such a big chunk of the uh, power run foam. It's still got some, but um, so it's not as soft, but it's also maybe not as bouncy as well. Um, it gives you more road feel than something like the Triumph 20s. But for me, who would normally wear racers or slightly lower profile shoes, then that's the kind of shoe that I would normally go for, eight millimetre drop. So again, kind of fine for pickups. And actually it's the shoe that I took when I could only take one trainer away. A late contender though, which only arrived with me yesterday, is the On Cloud Monster. Now, I looked at these beasts, they are a bit of a mammoth, uh, 262 grams for my women's seven, so the heaviest of the lot of the three that I've mentioned. Um, they're not as cushy as I would have expected actually from the look of them. Um, they've still got um, plenty of kind of uh, resistance to them. And actually I've really enjoyed running in them um, so far. I feel again like they could cope with a bit of a pickup if you wanted to, um, but obviously there is plenty of cushioning there. So um, 
Jury's a bit out on those at the moment. I know I'm late to the party, but they may well be a late contender for one of my favourite cushion shoes as well. Okay, so my first pick for cushion shoes, and cushion shoes is an area that I'm pretty fond of. I think I'd probably say that cushion shoes are the, the shoes that I spend most of my time in, and I test a lot more cushion shoes than other shoes, basically. Now, the first pick that I've gone for is a difficult one because this year there have been loads of great cushion shoes that have really made picking the best ones quite difficult. There's probably about six or seven around at the moment that I really like and I'm enjoying running in. I've been doing a lot of marathon training recently and um, cushion shoes have played a massive part of that. But my, my main pick, which will come as no surprise to most people, but it's one that is getting very difficult to stay at the top, is a New Balance Small V3. Now, the New Balance Small V4 is available in some places now, uh, and I haven't had a chance to use it yet. So as soon as that comes out, I will get hold of it desperately and start testing it and uh, see if it's as good as the, the, the V3. Um, but the Small V3, New Balance Small V3, I would say that the reason I like it so much is that it, it's a cushion shoe. There's a there's a big chunk of cushioning in it, but the uh, fresh foam midsole foam that sits in it, it's not traditionally a really soft foam. If you if you've tried the New Balance um, 1080 V12 or any of the earlier versions of that, that cushioning is actually it's quite balanced. It's not really soft. It's not really cushy. It just has a nice balance to it where it's a little bit of firmness as well. I found that it just has a lovely turnover. The uh, harder, slightly firmer midsole, I mean, it's not by no means a, a hard midsole, but in comparison to some other shoes like the Nike Invincible, it is a relatively firmer midsole. It's just got a lovely turnover. It has a nice bit of responsiveness to it, um, and it's got a, a nice rolling feeling to it as well. I've really enjoyed running this shoe. Every time I take it out, I have a great run in it. Um, and it's one of those shoes where when I'm testing other shoes, I still want to reach for this shoe just because every time I've run in it, I've just been really pleased with it. Um, and it's just very plush, comfortable upper as well. Everything about this shoe is basically about comfort um, and just keeping things nice and efficient and, and enjoyable on the run. My second pick for cushion shoes. Now, this is a very tough decision um, because I almost almost want to put this in at the top spot. But for me, the more V3 just just pips it. Um, but the Triumph, I've, I've been a big fan of the Triumph line, the Saucony Triumph line for a while. And um, the Triumph 20, I think, is the it's the best one out so far. They've made a few updates to the design. The midsole feels slightly different. Um, but I think the thing about the Triumph 20 is that it's got everything you want from a cushion shoe. Um, but it's just, it's got a little bit of bounce in it, which you don't often get with a cushion shoe. Quite often cushion shoes can feel like they are protecting your feet, they're um, making your knees and everything feel good by the end of the run. But quite often they, they don't feel like they're helping you run a little bit faster or just sort of giving you a bit of energy to, to move forward. Now, I would it, it's not something you compare with something like the Vaporfly in terms of bounce and energy, but there is a nice little bit of pop, a little bit of bounce in this midsole foam. Uh, it's Power One Plus, um, which is a great midsole foam. So I can have really been producing some great uh, stuff recently and it's just very nice in the Triumph. When you go for a long run in the Triumph 20 it just feels a little bit more energetic than what you'd get from some shoes and it's just so enjoyable. I really love running in this shoe and I feel like when it comes to the world of cushion shoes, the heavily cushion shoes, I think this is one of the more versatile ones out there. It feels like you can pick up the pace a bit more in the shoe and just train a little bit harder. You're not going to be doing tempo training or racing in this shoe unless you were more focused on the distance as opposed to getting fast times. But it is just an incredibly enjoyable and comfortable shoe to wear. There's a lovely bit of grip on the outsole as well. Um, and I just think it's a fantastic shoe. I, it's another shoe that I love reaching for if I just want to enjoy a run. Quite often when I don't want to go for a run, these are the shoes that I, I go for um, just because it makes the run feel easier, nicer, and I can enjoy it. My third pick for cushion shoes, and again, it's it's a very difficult one because any of these three shoes, it would be fantastic for people looking for a cushioned running shoe. They're all fantastic, and if a couple of these shoes didn't quite weren't quite as good as they are, any of these could have won it. But the uh, Brooks Glycerin Twenty. It's again, it's the most superior of the glycerins. I've been a massive fan of the glycerin line for a while, um, but the glycerin 20 has this nitrogen infused midsole foam 
uh, in it as well. And it just makes it a little bit bouncier, a little bit more enjoyable to run in. Um, and it's just very comfortable. I really enjoy this shoe. I don't think it's as versatile as the Triumph 20. Um, and I do think it's a little bit more sluggish than the New Balance More V3. But I always have a great run in this shoe. I just think it's very comfortable. Uh, really just cradles the foot. It's a lovely plush upper that feels very secure and stable. Lovely shoe to wear and a fantastic amount of outsole rubber on it as well. So it grips really well all year round. Fantastic shoe. And uh, even though I picked it as a third spot, I think if you picked any of those three shoes, you're going to be happy and you're going to have many, many miles of enjoyable, cushioned, comfortable running. So for my cushion shoe picks, uh, I basically picked out shoes that would be the third shoe in my rotation and kind of thing. They would sit alongside you know, a dedicated racing shoe, something like the Vaporfly, a faster training shoe, something like the Socony Endorphin Speed. And then I'd have a cushion shoe for easy miles, you know, some long runs, a bit of a daily training, but more focused on comfort uh, and just kind of cruising through miles. The three shoes I've gone for kind of serve that purpose in slightly different ways. Um, a couple of them are slightly more niche shoes for me, uh, but the one I've gone for as my top pick is the shoe that would be the third shoe in my rotation. It's the Puma Velocity Nitro 2. It's a really comfortable uh, cushion shoe that hasn't got a massive stack uh, compared to some of the you know max cushion shoes on the market, but it is still very comfortable. Feels very natural on the foot. I really enjoy it. It's got a nice level of softness and bounciness without being overbearing. It can use it for some slightly speedier stuff if you want to. It works well as a daily trainer, but you can just use it as a pure cushion shoe for easy and long runs as well. And the other big string to the bow for the Velocity Notch 2 is the outsole, which is really good. Uh, grips very well on light trails, wet pavements. I even took the first version out in a snowstorm once. Uh, that's very important to me on things like cushion shoes and daily trainers in general. I want a shoe that can be a handle, a nice variety of surfaces, especially when you are just cruising around on easy runs and you might want to dive into a park and hit a park trail, that kind of thing. It's also a really good value. You know, the RRP of £100, $120 is you know, good value, especially in the cushion category, which is getting extremely expensive to stay these days. And it's often in sales for less than that as well. So yeah, it's a shoe that just for me sits perfectly in the Goldilocks zone in lots of different ways. It's good value, it's pretty good looking. You can wear it outside your running as well. Uh, it's got a nice ride that's comfortable and bouncy, but still quite speedy and it's not overly anything. So you can just enjoy the shoe for a variety of runs without it you know, intruding onto how you're feeling. The second shoe I've gone for is very different <laughs> to that in lots of different ways. And this one is a bit more niche for me. This is the Nike Invincible 2. Jane will tell you all about how great the shoe is. So I'll just add it quickly that it's a supremely fun soft springy bouncy shoe it's pretty unique i really don't think there's anything out there that feels like the nike invincible the nova blast maybe comes closest but it's not as bouncy and fun as this shoe i don't think this is you know very much an an overdone shoe it's a bit much in many ways like it's got this huge stack it's very soft it's very bouncy you feel it all the time on the run but lots of the time i really enjoy that feeling so the Invincible is a shoe I, I love using when I'm, for all my kind of easy runs and long runs, when I'm not doing massive mileage and I'm not, maybe I'm in the early stages of marathon training, like, you know, I'm not that tired overall and it just, it's very fun to use for all those kind of runs. It's not, you know, incredibly stable, but it's not unstable either. Uh, and so I, you know, it's when, yeah, in the first, say, like, flush of marathon training, the first month and a half, you're really excited. Every run's so much fun and this just enhances that. It's really great fun. And then later on in marathon training uh, is when I start to, deviate away from it a little bit because I'm really tired I'm a bit creaky this does protect the legs fantastically well but it is a bit wobblier and a bit much like when I'm you know, going out for like you know, 10 miles easy on a Wednesday or something like that just grinding through uh, this shoe can go two ways it can liven it up and be fantastically fun or it could be ah oh, this is just too much right now I want a slightly more stable normal shoe so I can just you know, get through the run whereas this is very much you're aware of the shoe a lot on the run but most of the time I do love that it's a really enjoyable shoe it's a fantastic cushion shoe one I'd recommend people give a try because does seem like it's a bit of a Marmite shoe. You either love the feeling of it or really hate it. Uh, one thing is it's got a very high price. I would definitely say try and get a deal on the Invincible 1 because it's very similar experience on the foot that I found. Uh, but if not, wait for sales periods. This is a shoe that does always end up in Nike sales around things like Black Friday, that kind of thing. Then the last cushion shoe in my trio is pretty much the opposite of the Nike Invincible. This is the sensible shoe. This is the Socony Tempus. It's a stability shoe, but it's pretty lightweight. All the stability elements in the shoe aren't too overbearing, so you can use it as a neutral runner. I'm a neutral runner and I really enjoy running in it. It's got some power run PB foam in the midsole, which is the soft bouncy stuff in things like the endorphin speed. But then you've got a frame of power run foam, which is a bit firmer, and that creates that stable feel. You've got sidewalls of foam, a nice wide base. 
And this is exactly the kind of shoe I pull on late into marathon training for my easy runs. It's the one that, yeah, everything is a bit tired. I think I need a little bit more support in my body, and this is perfect for cruising through miles. It's still pretty versatile, though. It's more versatile than the Invincible, I'd say. You can do faster runs than this, tempo runs. It's, it isn't that heavy, and it's got that springy ride with a little bit of a rocker going on as well. This is almost a cushion shoe I feel like I should be using more of, and everyone should use more of. Like having a stable cushion shoe is just not a bad idea, is it? Even if you are a neutral runner, if the stability elements aren't annoying, if the shoe isn't heavy or overbearing, then why not use a stability shoe? It's great to have that extra you know, support. And this isn't overbearing in any way. It feels like a neutral shoe. It feels like a nice, fun shoe to use for your easy runs. So this and the Invincible, a slightly more niche case scenario than the Velocity Nitro 2, I think it's just a great do-it-all cushion shoe. The Invincible is when I want that really fun ride. You know, it's the middle of summer. I've just started marathon training. Everything's springing around. I feel fantastic. Uh, I want that bouncy, fun feeling underfoot. And then the Tempest is when, yeah, it's you know, it's game time. About three months into marathon training, it's not long left. Got to get through these last few runs, or it's keeping the body in as good condition as possible before I start tapering. And that's when the Tempest really comes into its own. Three cushion shoes. I think they're all great. I use them for slightly different, you know, purposes. But if I was just picking one, it would be the Velocity Nitro 2 as the most kind of versatile cushion option. So there you have it. Those have been our best picks of the cushion shoes that have come out this year. Those are the favorite ones that we've gone back to time and time again. We hope there are some in there that you kind of agree with. If you don't, or you've found something completely different or you hate some of the shoes we've chosen, hit us up in the comments below, let us know. We're always interested in the feedback from the viewers out there to see what you guys have been lo running in, loving, enjoying, or hating. Tell us, please tell us. It helps inform what we do next. Speaking of which, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell so you can hear about more and more videos that are coming up on the channel. We will be doing a longer, more exhaustive list of the best cushion shoes that are out in 2022. So you can dive into that for some advice, some inspiration. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching and we hope to see you again soon on the Run Testers.